up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. Brian, I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, we got a lot. This is going to, I've been looking forward to this um, show. A lot of interesting topics to discuss, a lot of interesting developments to discuss. Um, how you doing? Good. Uh, it's been an interesting, interesting week of news, I would say, especially in the last, I'd say, 48 hours, things have really turned up. So, Yes, 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 definitely. Um, a lot of interesting developments, a lot of interesting topics of discussion that we're going to get into regarding Simu Liu and the China situation. Um, what's the guy's name? Dennis Villeneuve. Denis His Villeneuve, comment? yeah. De- Delhi. Delhi Villeneuve. Denis Villeneuve, yep. Villeneuve, yeah. okay. Um, we're going to get into the discussion of, of what he's talking about. I think he could have said it better, but I get what he's talking about. And there's an article here written by um, Mr. Alexander Harrison, which we'll get into on Screen Rant, that he, he said it. He's, I, I can't really further give you my point of view because he so eloquently wrote it. And I'll read that to you when we get to, into that topic. Um, I want to talk about Warner Brothers um, getting into the, the, their spinoff with... Uh, a horrible <laughs> Mortal Kombat. Um, but I have high hopes, and I'll explain later why. Um, then we'll get into, listen, we thought it was going to be Netflix. But Nolan said, if it's less than, if it's 45 days or less, it ain't happening. And other things that he wanted. And Brian, he's playing a very dangerous game. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about when I say that, but I'll explain to you. And, and, and I want to hear your thoughts on that. Um, but first, let's get into a series which we haven't discussed yet on the show, but we have been mentioning here and there, you know, how things started in very subtle, I guess, descriptions of what we felt about the show and how it has progressed. Brian, the What If series. I have to say, initially I wasn't too enthusiastic about what I had seen in that first episode. You and I had discussed off the the record um, and said that it feels like they're just redoing it, but it's a, a, a quick version with a different, they just swapped out characters. It wasn't really anything new about it other than the subtleties that they gave us with Sharon Carter being um, Captain America. They gave, it was almost shot for shot, almost. Then I think what 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 was next was Black Panther was next. Uh, yeah, it was Black Panther as Star Lord. Yes, that one I was like, okay, you know, at that point in watching both those episodes, I just said to myself, you know, this is not going to be this thing, this or this fantastic thing that we were looking forward to, and it was going to be, you know, at the, you know, at least top three. Because I think I had a top three. We got to go back to the tape. I, you had a number one. As the stories have gone along, it has gotten better for me, Brian. I think it is reaching. I think for me, in my opinion, what I see, I see something. Wow, this is a, a different route than what I initially thought it was going to be with Sharon Carter. I thought this was going to be, you know, and the, and the switching, you know, it's just swapping out of characters. Um, what are your, are, do your, do your, um, I, I guess thoughts about the, the, the show ch- are similar to mine or you still think 
it's not what you thought it'd be. They're similar. There's no way it can be number one just because I feel like the first three episodes are not are just not there. They're not at the level that no. we qualify this. When you consider that Loki, as we talked about many times, the part of what made the show great is the consistency. Yeah. And really, you could argue there's one lull. It's the shortest episode in the bunch, and it's right in the middle. And the rest yeah. of the show is, you know, they just sustain an incredibly high level and they finish yeah. at the peak. So this show can't get to that level. Mm -hmm. I don't understand the first three episodes, to be quite honest. I don't know why Marvel was so conservative because that's the only word I can come up for. The, the point of this show is to be aggressive. The yeah. whole point of this comic and the point of this show is to swing big and expand the horizons yeah, yeah. of what's possible. Yeah. I just will never understand how they sat in a room and said, let's lead off the first three innings with a rehash yeah. of everyone's favorite MCU movies, only let's take a two hour film and make it 30 minutes yeah. and let's make one character swap and yeah, yeah throw in some tentacles and a creature here that yeah. like, you know, I mean, all due respect to Haley Atwell who, who voiced, you know, it was nice to hear her voice again, but mm -hmm. And, and you're like, okay, I get you're trying to, you know, show Agent Carter empowered as the, the Captain Britain, effectively. That's what she, yeah. Captain Carter, but she's yeah. Captain Captain Britain. And it just doesn't really work. It's just kind of tedious. It's because yeah. First Avenger, again, it, it took two hours to build the motif. And it's like, well, here you only have 30 minutes and you're relying on the fact that people saw First Avenger. So you can yeah, kind of yeah, skip yeah. around and be people are like, oh, I know where I am in the movie. Mm -hmm. But like, I don't want to rewatch First Avenger. I don't care if there is a character swap. That's not that interesting to me. Yeah. Um, so, and I felt even, you know, the Black Panther Star-Lord episode was very similar. Like there was a little more variation, but it was still, yeah, yeah. what if T'Challa was part of the Guardians? That's basically hate, all it was asking. I hate and what they did with, with Thanos. They did what yeah. they did with Thanos. They did with the Hulk. Yeah, no, agreed. Yeah, they, they, exactly. And then he, exactly. They made him like a, I mean, they made him kind of like a weak version of the thing of Fantastic Four. Like, hey, kind of go get your butt kicked with these sort <laughs> yeah. of a sidekick. Yeah. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And so I, I, I kind of got to the third episode and I was sort of like almost about to be like, this show is just, they just didn't get what the point of the show was. What was the third one again? Let me see, I can't even remember what the third one was now. That's how long, that's how it wasn't. It wasn't the Doc Strange one, right? Was it? No, 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 no. That's the that's the that's one. that's what things picked up. So to me, that should have been the premiere. Yeah. If I'm them and I'm giving them notes, and you want to hook people that this show is going places you haven't thought about, yeah, that's the premiere. Yeah, yeah. that thing got dark. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, and yeah. I would kept waiting for the Marvel moment where they were gonna snap it back. Yeah. No, they just <laughs> kept taking it down into the abyss until yeah. it was literally like the end of the world. And I was like, yeah. okay, now this is what I wanted yeah. to see from the show. And then I thought even the, you know, the next time when they kind of made it zombie Avengers, I'm like, okay, like now yeah. you're throwing yeah. some creativity in here that really made this fun for yeah. me. And so I, I you know, if you can, it, I would honestly tell people if they have not come to this show, you don't have to watch the first three. Just watch, just start yeah. with episode four. And you actually might enjoy the short show more if you do that. But if you do that, I mean, it seems to me like some of this stuff is connected, right? I um, hear what you're saying. I'm just yeah. saying like from yeah. a, how you'll embrace the show, like I think you'll feel better almost about going back and watching episodes one, two, and three if you start with episode four. Three was actually um, when the, the the Avengers were getting killed off by um, Hank. Oh, right. Okay. That's right. Yeah. I think that's where, for me, that's they where it started to get fame. interesting. They were all yeah, getting Yeah, fame. yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I, okay, I remember. I think that's where it got get interesting for me, and then it just okay. got better and better. Um, have you seen all the What Ifs? I haven't seen six yet. The one that came okay. out yesterday. So true. We'll talk about that one later. Um. Yeah, but so far, what if, man, um, has gotten better. 
it really started off like I honestly, when I was watching the first one, I got so like disinterested. I just wanted to look at the animation. I was just, you know, I was watching it as if I saw it three times. <laughs> you know, I was just looking for other stuff and just admiring, I guess, because I really do like the the animation. Um, yeah, anything else you want to go over with What If? Well, I just say, like, I hope that Marvel now is on this path of leave the, the kind of leave the movies we've seen behind. Yeah. And take Go the characters, it. take the characters, but leave them things we've seen behind and push. And I think yeah. if we do that, now I think we're going to be in pretty good shape because as you say, I think it looks good. Mm -hmm. I like that the watcher is getting a little more involved. Like, especially oh, yeah. in the strange episode, he he kind of stopped being just the watcher. Like there was yeah, actual yeah. fourth wall breakage yes, yes, and interaction. Yes. And I was like, mm -hmm. okay, now we're going somewhere with that. And so I think if they really kind of take us further and further in that direction, I say, you know, the crazier, the better uh, yeah. it is going to be the formula for this show. So hopefully this show's finding its stride, but, but uh, yeah, real, real tough, real tough yeah. to get into. I think as much yeah. as we thought the first three episodes of WandaVision were kind of like a, What's going on here? I think this was actually even harder to really yeah stick yeah definitely with to get to the payoff yeah definitely. What I do, what I really do like about um, the show is how, as you said, they've involved the Watcher a lot more, and not necessarily with him talking with Doctor Strange, which I thought was dope, was very interesting. It was like oh snap, he's talking to him, <laughs> right? Um, but. The way he's in like the background when they yes. when they start off the scenes and he's like just what that's it's dope and they call him the watch and he's just watching and i like the way they do that um but let us know what you guys think about the what if show thus far do you agree with its sort of uh beginning in not being that interesting and not really taking it as far as they've gotten with these um, later ha later uh, episodes. Um, let us know in the comment section below. Now, let's get into some some stuff. This is not necessary. Well, obviously, this has to do with superhero um, um, films. Um, but we're going to talk about, you know, another person who I guess wants the attention. Could, this could be a genius move or this could be something he shouldn't have done genius and mr this mr dennis denise villanueva Denny right villanueva Den, denny <laughs> i'm spanish so i, I gotta I, villanueva it looks a bit like you know a <laughs> spanish name denise villanueva you know i'm looking forward to seeing his movie dune that joint looks crazy um and I wasn't too much into Dune back in the day. I watched Solar Babies more than I did. <laughs> and I watched Dune. And so far from what I've seen in terms of tra trailers and stuff, um, it looks fantastic. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing that. And I'm going to go see that in theaters, despite sort of the mixed first reactions that we've gotten from uh, um, people who have seen this already. Um, so he says, let me, let me find the quote. He says, there are too many Marvel movies that are not, that are nothing more than a cut and paste of others. And Obviously, I was first a little bit offended when, when I'm like, what, what, what is he talking about, right? But then I just started thinking about what he said. And 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 Neil Blomkamp, that's his name, Neil Blomkamp? Yeah, director of District 9 and Elysium, among other things. Okay. So he's, do he's done some pretty high budget films, although I don't know if District 9 was that much of a high budget. I think it was just big was hit, still, low budget, yeah, big hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, he says, what a effing a-hole. Right, that's all he said. But I want to take you to um, 
something Mr. Alexander Harrison said about the film, which I was just, in, you know, pretty much um, summarizes what I have to say, because I'll probably go on and on forever trying to describe what he was, what he actually meant. But the writer says, as strong as Blomkamp's feelings may be about it, viewers will have to consider for themselves whether they find merit in the Doom director's claim. On the other hand, Marvel Studios has a very strong formula that many of their films follow. And their tendency to adopt a uniform visual style has been criticized in the past. I think this is what he was, he just didn't choose the right words when he said what he said. He continues, on the other hand, it is not uncommon for studios to develop this kind of signature, particularly with films of the same genre, and to dismiss them all as copies is to completely overlook the contribution of the individual operating within that formula. This is, this falls along the line of Patty Jenkins saying what she said last time about Streaming, I mean, movies that are, are, are that are, for, are made for TV look like they look like fake movies. He continues. That however, was that was worse than this. Yeah, 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 yeah. However, opinion. fans feel about Villeneuve's opinion, though it is impossible to deny the outsized role of superhero movies in today's popular culture. As long as the MCU remains a box office juggernaut that encourages other studios to to desperately try and turn everything into a cinematic universe, expect this sort of public criticism to continue. Brian, I agree with everything he said. Your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, you know, on the on the, the, the flippant part of me says, I think we can make a great Avengers 4 if we take Denny Villeneuve, Martin Scorsese, Bong Joon-ho, Alejandro Inaratu, I think those are the biggest four, mm -hmm. who have God knows how many Academy Award nominations between them, none of whom seem to care for the MCU films and basically say this some version of the same thing. Put yeah. them on one side and let's have let's have Kevin and his friends on the other. But I, I you know my issue with the comment. So is he wrong? No, he's not totally wrong. We yeah. we talk about it the same we talk about it in a different way, right? We yeah. talk about Marvel, whether it's Marvel's struggles with finales, whether yeah. it's Marvel, we talked about it in the sense of, you know, they, they, they need to redefine the balance between, you know, studio and filmmaker freedom. Yeah. And, and, but my, the pushback I give to people who say this is it assumes that the MCU has not changed and will not change at any point in the future. Yeah. And I think that sells the MCU short. Mm -hmm. Because if you sit back and say, look, okay, it's gonna be a little long-winded answer here, but like if you're Disney and you're Marvel and you start down this path and the dream was Avengers back in the day. Yeah nobody is green lighting that idea without some kind of guardrails for what they think is the right way to do that yeah and they're not about to just hand the keys over willy-nilly along the way because then you get what happened at warner brothers <laughs> right so you just can't you can't separate the practical from the creative the studio needs to make money yeah. So they need to play the percentages they think will lead to the most dollars. And they found a lane that appealed to a mass audience with Iron Man 1. And once they found it, they milked it. Of course. Because they wanted to get to the finish line of the original intent. Mm -hmm. I just don't see how you can really kill that as an enterprise or you know at the extreme say that it's not cinema no i mean to me that's is that much different than saying i don't know let's say you have a band that puts out a great album with a certain sound and goes multi-platinum and then 
they put out the same style of album five or six times and they all go multi-platinum. Are you going to say that's not music because <laughs> everyone bought it, but it sounds the same and it's not pushing the bounds of creative? Yeah, yeah. You can be annoyed by it, yeah. but like it, it still stands as work. It still stands yeah. as art. It's not, you know, so. And it's making money. Right. So I'm just saying I empathize with the rationale for what they did and why they did it. Now, I think where I would start to side with Villanova is if we said, look, if Marvel and Disney basically said, this is the only way we're ever going to do things. And if you're not willing to play ball, we're not interested in talking to you. Yeah. I've never heard them say that. Yeah. And I think as we've started to see in the Disney Plus shows, and I think as we're starting to see hints of in the movies, they are starting to loosen the shackles. Yeah. Order contracts. Somewhat, yeah. Colonel looks different than Chong chi which looked different than everything Captain else. Movies. And yeah, yeah. It's not that there's no commonality. It's just that you're starting to see some evolution. You're starting to see a few things look a little bit different yeah. in different places. And like, I don't expect them to get from you know, to Marlon Brando's Shakespeare from Avengers 1 overnight. Mm -hmm. But I see signs that they are trying at the margin some different things. And, and I, I think that's where people like Villeneuve need to back off and basically say like, look, you know what? In 10 years, you might be begging to make one of these movies because they have found a way to take these properties and give you the freedom to put your stamp on yeah um i think this, this and this could be somewhat of a telling marvel a hey, let me get a shot i can make your joints different whatever right you never know you never know if it prompts parliament to be like hey give this guy a call i want to hear what he's talking about why he said what he said let me understand what he's talking about and then, you know, who knows, do a movie. But um, we all know that Marvel has a formula. And I think these conversations are being had at headquarters. Hence the way they went with Shang-Chi. Hence how they're going with the Eternals. It's a bit different. And I like that more than seeing the same old thing, you know, with characters. I love the characters. I look forward to seeing who these characters are sometimes, you know, before I try to understand what the movie is, right? But, you know, they, they've consistently, you know, worked within this lane and now are branching out and trying different things and seeing the, the, I guess the creative um, eye in these other talents and, you know, wanting to do something different because they understand that it can't continue because we'll get tired. We, because we've been pointing it out. At one point enough is enough, right? Go ahead. I just don't, I, that's, I just don't understand how you can sit down and watch, you know, our, Honestly, we've gotten more TV than movies this year. So yeah. I don't know how you could watch the finale of Loki, the fifth episode of Falcon and Winter Soldier, the I think it's the fifth episode of WandaVision and say, well, oh, we're, we're exactly where we were when Thor 1 and First Avenger were coming out. We're not. Like, those yeah. are different yeah. motifs, styles, yeah. approach. Yeah. Like, I just don't know. So I don't understand. I think that's, that's you're kind of just glossing over. Exactly. Right, what is changing? Exactly. Because you're used to it being the old way. Yeah. And I'm just saying, you might wake up sometime in the next two or three years and say, wow, phase four had a lot more in the variety basket than you thought. I don't think he's seen that evolution and that change of how some of these films are done. Although we still may seem in the, like all the way from the beginning up until end game, yeah, there was a formula, but you can still 
pick out the greatness of some of those films and talk about how different they were. Um, but you still saw the same formula and now they're, 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 they're definitely, you can see the evolution. I don't think he's really paid attention. And if he has, he, this is not a, a genre for him, I guess. I mean, I can't say that because he's doing doom, you know? So he, yeah, look, he's, I mean, he's for, going for the spectacle. Yeah. And like, let's be, let's be clear. I mean, Denny Villeneuve is probably one of the 10 most yeah. talented filmmakers working today. Right. So yeah, you go through his MDB, he's only been making films for about 10 years. And it's like, it starts with prisoners, a Hugh Jackman, Jake Gyllenhaal drama that was well received. And then he starts mm -hmm. to turn it up. Sicario. That's a fantastic. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Arrival, very thoughtful science fiction movie. Um, yeah. The Blade Runner, the Blade Runner update, I guess 2049. It's beautifully shot. I actually yeah. really like it. I think the I think global audience kind of missed that one a little bit. I think it's great. Yeah. Um, he has not, and then even Dune. So what we're kind of getting on Dune is the people who like it passionately love it. Yeah. The people who don't, I think it has the earmarks of all the problems that Dune has always had, which is the book is so freaking deep and complex. Yeah. It is just too hard to make into even a two part movie. Yeah. But visually it's going to look it's great stunning. and it yeah, does yeah. look great in the trailer. So this guy, you know, clearly has, he has credibility as a creator to like no, definitely. an opinion. I guess I'm just questioning, I, to your point, I don't think he sat down and watched yeah. everything the MCU nah. has to offer no. when he said that. He's probably watched yeah. the sampling of phase one and two, checked out, and it's kind of mm -hmm. like, well, that's what they are. Or he's a fan and he's just trying to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> but time will tell. So the weird know, subplot to uh, that, I got to throw it, he did, so this is not him being interviewed, he interviewed Chloe Zhao. Okay. And in that interview, he actually spoke very highly, was very excited to see what she could do with a Marvel movie. So maybe we should check back with him in two months time yeah, and see what he thinks after that. Because he actually, in that interview between two filmmakers, was he wasn't really ardently MCU. He kind of, I guess he kind of was still with this theme of like, I want you to change the formula kind of mm -hmm. idea, but he was still mm -hmm. sort of excited that like, Hey, you're getting a shot to do it. Let's see what you can do with it. Cause you're, you're awesome. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, you know, <laughs> you never know, man, you never know. Um, but it would be I interesting. Think one last thing, one mm -hmm. last thing on this. Filmmakers got to stop falling into this trap. I'm just going to say this because. Yeah. Every press junket, if it a is director serious, that it, hasn't yeah. done one of these, yeah, yeah, you gotta know this question is coming because of all the viral answers that have come before. Yeah, and to me, the one thing that stinks about this yeah. is it takes away from the promotion of Doom. Exactly. Now it's not Denny Villeneuve talking about his film. He's gonna be now in all the other interviews. He's gonna get asked follow-ups yeah, about, about this, the yeah. MCU, and it reminds me in a weird way. And I know this is a weird analogy. It reminds me of when Tom Cruise went crazy and jumped on Oprah's couch, and Steven Spielberg wouldn't work with him anymore. Wow! Because when they were doing war, when they were doing promotion for that movie, that entire promotion got hijacked because by the Scientology discussion, his relationship, his weird behavior. Yeah, and it took away from like. What was that was a decent movie. MI3 is a pretty good movie that didn't really, you know, probably didn't do as much box as it should. Have. Like, so that's the shame of this is like, we're not yeah. talking about Dune, we're just talking about him and the MCU. And yeah. that's why filmmakers, you got to watch out because you're going to get asked. Yeah, he could have, he could have said the same thing, but in a more like, I understand what he's, he's getting at, um, but he's not, he's straight up like, like he's he's making it seem like there's no effort in making these films. Copy and paste. I can copy and paste. Copy and paste. Yeah, assembly line. Like, yeah, exactly. yeah. So and and it, and it's not that, and it's not that. But let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of what he said.
is he right somewhat? Could he, find, could he have found better words to sort of describe the Marvel Universe and how is how has it been created so, thus far? Um, next up, Chris Nolan <laughs> made his choice. There was a few people in the running for his next film. I could believe MGM was one of them. Uh, Sony. Sony. Apple. Apple. I, there was, I, so apparently he had a conversation with the people at Warner Brothers this past week, but obviously we already know where his next movie is going and it's going to Universal with some stipulations. Brian, how powerful, this is the thing, this is the thing with Chris Nolan and I, and I was reading an article that sort of uh, put things a bit into perspective for me with regards to him. Um, and I highlighted a passage and this comes from, to us from Deadline. And this was written by Mike Fleming Jr. He writes, uh, the best way that elite filmmakers can control how their films unspool is to take the route, the route that Nolan has his WME and his WME reps did here and control their destiny through deal making. The financial part of this was relatively simple. The deal followed the template of the one Nolan has operated under at Warner Brothers. So this came down to Warner Media's day day and date move move costing Warner Brothers a cornerstone director who at age 51 is in his prime with a lot of stories left to tell and it is a potentially important pushback from a theatrical film purist in this streaming juggernaut moment. This is the thing. He was able to strike his deal. I think he gets like 20% off the first um yeah, 20% of first gross dollars. That is a enormous fee. That's yeah. crazy. And he also wanted a hundred to 100, 100 to 130 day window. Like they can't, they, they can't release. They got to wait three weeks. This is before, the part that's, this part killed me. Yeah. This part yeah, was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So three, he got to wait three weeks before you put it on your streaming platform. Right? No, no, no. The studio can't release another movie three weeks before or three weeks after his movie. In wow. Any form. He, he got the entire studio held hostage. Wow. That's crazy. Thanks for clarifying that. That's crazy. But this is the thing. Your joint better be good. It better be good. Because if you put out something that nobody's interested in, nobody wants to pay to see that movie because of whatever bad reviews that come out, he can't, he can't, he can't step up to the table with that sort of you know what I'm saying? With those sort of demands. What, what what do you think about that? That in particular? Well, it's funny. We talked about his destinations. Universal was actually rumored from the very beginning as most likely. Mm -hmm. um, and so that is where he ended up. Ended up. And it sounds like he might have flirted with Netflix along the way. But I mean, I was thinking, you imagine, you imagine if Netflix couldn't release an original property for three weeks before and three weeks after That's his movie crazy. with how much stuff they put on their platform every Dude. week. Oh my God. So, so that probably ended that conversation. But that, not only that though, right? So historically the movie theatrical window was 90 days. Far from getting 90 days, he got over a hundred. So he got an even longer window to keep his movie in the theaters at a time when 45 is yeah. now the new normal. So, I mean, this was, I mean, this was absolute heist yeah. and it shows you i mean he is probably i mean given his age because he's younger than the two other guys i was going to mention he probably is the most powerful 
filmmaker in Hollywood. I would say like Spielberg and James Cameron are probably still yeah. above him in terms of stature, but because of their age and sort of the seniority, yeah. like, you know, they, Cameron's basically doing Avatar for the rest of his life. And Spielberg kind of is at the stage of his career where he's kind of just experimenting and checking his, you know, kind of bucket list for, yeah, 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 yeah. for his career. So it's just a different stage. So Nolan at 50 years old is in his prime. He probably has another good 20 to 25 years of, of, of filmmaking. And so nobody else could, could command a, a structure like this in, in today's, today's environment. So you're right. It's also, it, so it's also interesting. He did not, and this was true with Warner's Warner Brothers as well. He did not sign a multi-picture deal. This is only for the one movie. Mm -hmm. And that's even though he distributed through Warner Brothers for 20 years, he never actually had a Warner Brothers multi-year con. They had, there was no first look, there was no exclusive deal. He just worked with them over and over again. Yeah. And it was sort of this, I don't know, synergy of they gave him what he wanted and you know, he knew he was getting what he wanted from them. So, so there's nothing about this that says he would stay with the universe. If this experience goes poorly, he can then move around again for the next one. Yeah. But he does it with an odd movie, a biopic about J. Robert Oppenheimer. Yeah, yeah. Period piece about the development of the atomic bomb. That is not a billion dollar movie by its definition. It just is not. And it it isn't a movie where it's not a movie like Memento. It's not a movie like uh, well, even the Prestige, which was small budget yeah. but really Prestige is now what was that other movie with Insomnia? Was the other one. Oh, oh, um, it's well, Inception was a big budget. Yeah. yeah. So this one is a, is a small budget, I assume. Well, it's bigger than I would have thought. It's a hundred million dollars. A hundred million dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same budget as Dunkirk. Yeah. Uh, so when with, when with his profitability deal, like this thing's probably got to do like four hundred million dollars globally to be in the black for Universal, I would think. Do you think studios want him for his obviously for his filmmaking prowess, but for not but for his ideas as well? This is not. You know, this is not thinking outside the box. You're doing a, you know, a, a, a movie about a, a person. You know, you're doing, you know, one of those films that doesn't doesn't really take us outside of anything other than a, a educating us and seeing some great performances. Right. Yeah. As I said, this is this is now he he's a genre guy. Like he's always used his films to explore and manipulate different genres so mm -hmm. you know tenant is basically his james bond movie done in a science fiction way yeah um even you know even the even the batman series he always called it the homage to heat i mean it was his yeah. sort of crime drama yeah so he's always done that so i'm assuming that the, and dunkirk obviously was his version of a war movie yeah. I, I'm assuming this will alt it'll become clear what the what genre he is attempting to channel with this movie, yeah. but it does strike me as a bit of a risk. Um, my sense is though, if you if if Universal does right by him on this, he will be back doing sci-fi, yeah, 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 doing yeah. his bread and butter before long. Because they I think figure, I go ahead. They figure he didn't have anything written contractually with. Warner Brothers, like you said, he just worked with him. He'll work with us if we let him do what he did. We, as long as we get content from him, we good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think they're betting on if we can get 20, if we do the right things, we can get 20 years out of this guy. And if you look at the past 20 years, nobody has been a more profitable, reliable yeah. filmmaker than him. And, and, you know, from Universal standpoint, it is a big win in the sense of right now, you know, the, the, the Fast and Furious franchise is sort of reaching the latter stages of its run, right? There's two more movies in the main franchise and then Hobbs and Shaw has spun off. Yeah. But that's closer to the end than the beginning. Yeah. Um, you know, Jurassic World will keep going, I'm sure, but the, the end of this trilogy is the next movie. Um, yeah. You know, they have the Jason Bourne franchise on ice right now. So this, this gives them like open-ended IP in yeah. the form of Chris Nolan that they didn't have. And so that adds a lot of value from a streaming standpoint. 
I know he hates streaming, but in the long run, the ability to stream his movies after they've gone out of the theater, it makes yeah. a lot of sense. I would think he's going to, and it's also probably one of the few studios where he could get budget. You know, like yeah, he true. is used to getting whatever he wants, he wants. budget wise. I mean, like Tenant, I think was 250, 275, like for a yeah, original crazy. film, not franchise. That's unheard yeah. of. Yeah, that's crazy. But he needed a studio that would give him those kind of checks. Yeah. Yeah, let us know in the conversation below. Are you looking forward to this type of film from Chris Nolan? Are you, or are you sort of neutral on, on or disappointed because there's not anything new with regards to, you know, these crazy far out ideas and doing it in the style that he does it? Um, is it a big risk? Let us know in the comment section below. Warner Brothers. They're busy. Yeah, right? They're reportedly developing a Mortal Kombat spinoff. Brian, if it's anything like what if with regards to a bad beginning and then progressively getting better, keep the budget tight, give us a, a at least a decent film. I think this would, could be this this could be like a Sharknado. You see how popular that thing they are on what 20? This could <laughs> I hope it's better than Sharknado. I know it's but I'm just be, saying, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> but you know, people they keep on making them. And who knows if they can the hope is that they can get better. And hear the complaints that people had about the first one and just sort of build upon that and give us some good Mortal Kombat films. I think it's just difficult. What are your thoughts? So if they put the tournament in a spinoff, is it really a spinoff? <laughs> we didn't get the tournament in the actual movie. Yeah, I mean, is it going to be a movie or a series? Well, it just says multiple spinoffs. Okay. So we don't know what that exactly means. My my first nomination in all seriousness, and I mentioned this, it was one of my the few things I really liked about the movie was I would like to see the period of time where Liu Kang and Kung Lao are riding together. That's mm -hmm. the period I want. Like the two of them, both were pretty good in the movie, I thought. And they clearly reference a part, a period of time where they're both at the Temple of Light, mm -hmm. kind of out in the world doing stuff. That's my first nomination. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to see that. I do not want to see, what was the name of the new character? Hole? Oh, uh, whatever. I don't, I don't know. He, he better not be showing up. In any Aquaman? Case. Let's call him Aquaman. <laughs> <laughs> that's right he got the momoa hand me down now we know where that went now we know where the original suit went it went to him yeah so i don't want to see him again no offense but yeah. uh but yeah that's so that would be my one the other one obviously i thought um i'm gonna butcher his name Hiroki, is it shinada Hiroki, the guy who played uh scorpion uh -huh. um I think that's he's obviously he's obviously a very good actor. Um, yes. and, I, and I wouldn't mind if they want to do something more with that version of the character. I, I wouldn't mind seeing it. Yeah, look, there's so many characters from the games that yeah, you can yeah. exactly, can exactly. But, but it's, it's, it's like fascinating to me how big you know, it shows, shows you though. And we talked about this, even though we we panned the film, mm -hmm. people watched it, people yeah. watched it, like people like the Mortal Kombat franchise, it has a fan base. I think it has a lot to do with more curiosity how to see how how it how they did this and if it was good you know i think listen i knew i knew it was bad from the beginning not new because i has you know i had seen it but new because so many people had trashed it i still most like if you if there's a movie that's horrible it takes me for a while to see a movie yeah you know, even it had, even if it has is 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 those 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 specific individuals who probably did like the movie and they tell you, oh, you got to watch it, you got to watch it. And a lot of a bunch of other people telling you it's horrible. But for Mortal Kombat, I'm curious. I'll watch it. You know, so if they can just make it better, I think they'll be onto something with this. Let's see. Let us know in the comment section below if you feel this is a good idea <laughs> well this also does fit though with what I, what I keep saying about what's going on ahead of the merger this also feels to me like a piece of IP where there was a little bit of viewership 
and now they're the the, the old people in place mm -hmm. are trying to prove out concepts and get things yeah. going and just get it up there on the board so that yep. when the new management comes in they can be like keep us around yeah, keep yeah, this yeah, around yeah. it works that yeah, it definitely yeah. feels like that yeah you said that a few episodes ago where they're just gonna be putting out stuff to see if it starts a following where people are, you know, they can't wait to see. It. And if obviously if these guys, uh, the, again, the new regime that comes in at, uh, in the middle of next summer, they're going to be looking at this stuff. And if things are popular and making money and there's buzz, and, you know, people want to see the next one, we'll go for it. If not, it's done over with. Feels a, feels like a Netflix approach to Warner and DC IP, like not as broad, but like they're picking like Mortal Kombat, Batman. They're picking yeah. like a character or a show or a property they have and then yeah. just branching it out like 20 different ways and seeing what sticks. Yeah. Uh, next up, Andy Serkis says Venom and Spider-Man movie is going to happen. We all know this is going to happen because Sony wants it to happen. Sony wants to have their thing for as long as they possibly can and make as much money as they possibly can. It's a very tight rope they're walking on because again, I've said it once before, if they bomb a film, where is that confidence going to come? I mean, they'll try again. I mean, it, it doesn't necessarily end with one. But two in a row, or if there's inconsistencies there, people are not gonna. I think eventually they, they is gonna get sold back to Marvel. Marvel's gonna acquire it at some point. But for the mean, for the next, I guess five years, five to ten years. Let's see what happens within that time frame. Um, where Spidey is gonna end up, Brian. Yeah, so I think a couple of a couple of pieces of this that are interesting are one, the early reactions that are coming out of Andy Serkis's Venom are maybe that it's better than we might have expected. Yeah. It's people saying they like the shorter run, the ninety minutes flies by. People generally like Woody Harrelson and Tom Hardy on screen together. Okay, but then everyone's saying you gotta stay for after the credits in a way oh, that wow. makes you think. Andy oh, Serkis yeah, yeah, might yeah. know a little something when yeah. he made this comment. Yeah. When is it? That, come, that movie comes out October 1st? October 1st. So we're two weeks out. It's like, you got to stay away from social media, man. Because it'll get ruined. Somebody's going to, whatever that is, which I'm pretty sure is going to possibly something to, ha, something to do with um, Spider-Man. But I'd like to see what that is going to be and who is going to be. It those has are... to be, right? The way it's being teased in the yeah. reactions, there's nothing else in the Venom-specific world yeah. Yeah. that would make people say that. Yeah. Yeah. But I think from so the other thing is from Sony's perspective, look, I mean, the two biggest stars, right? So they have Tom Holland and they have Tom Hardy, and they are two, you know, really big stars. And I think it was interesting when I when I read this comment and then I saw the stuff in the reactions and there's a lot of Spider-Man buzz, it took me back to there have been a lot of questions around why Venom is PG-13. And this is why you would make it. Because if you made two, three R-rated Venom movies that were successful, Spider-Man doesn't go R-rated. Yeah, he doesn't, yeah. So it, it made me think like, okay, in the back of their mind, they knew that to, to hopefully make this happen, they had to push the boundaries of PG-13, but they had to keep it PG-13 so they could bring Spider-Man into this at some yeah. point and have it and have it kind of seamlessly go in from sort of a theme and a tone perspective. So, no, I agree. It has to happen. I mean, yeah. it has to. Yeah. It's not that they yeah. wanted that. It has to. For yeah. this to work for them, yeah. Spider-Man has to cross over into their other characters. Yep. It's the only way the universe is going to work, which is why they renamed it. Yeah. Let's see um, what this movie has to offer. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Um, you are. And so are yeah. you going theater? I, 
Uh, I mean, you have to only, go theaters. Only, are, you yeah, gonna go, a, are you gonna go opening weekend? Like I no, I think what I said last time was I was gonna wait till last minute. I'm gonna I'm gonna check. Okay. And and wait till like the 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 week of to decide not to decide but to you know decide to go to the film to the movie to, on October 1st. I'm not going to just buy it now. Yeah. I'm gonna I could it. buy it now but I'm going to see it. I think yeah. based on reactions and the fact and honestly the fact that it's only 90 minutes actually makes true. me want to go see it true. more. True. You know, true. in this true. day and age it's very true. rare to have a movie like that. But, you know, I was just going to point out so Venom October 1st, No Time to Die October 8th, Dune October 22nd, Eternals November 5th. That's a lot of movies. If you miss a movie, it's going to back up awfully quick on you. (laughs) And I want to see No Time to Die. I'm a James Bond fanatic. Oh, you got to. I've I've seen, I don't know how you you feel about the James Bond franchise, but I've seen seen it all. Oh, yeah. Even the the bad ones with uh, Mr. Roger Moore. Which he has some good ones. I like I like Octopussy for some reason. I don't know. That's that's the one I like the most. I don't. Dal- Dalton's the worst. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I living like Living Daylights. I can't. That's, ah, Dalton. Yeah. 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 No. Even even Roger Moore. At least Roger Moore. It's it's like hammy. Like they know it's silly. So at least even though it is silly, you kind of yeah. are. You know, they're yeah. in on the joke, and it's sort of is watchable. Yeah. I think like Living Daylights is just boring. Yeah. Even license to kill is is tough. Yeah, Bond hack can never go back to that. They got to keep it where they have it now, very serious. If not, it's gonna be like Roger Moore type situation, and, and you know I can't. I, I don't want to. I'll watch it because it's James Bond, but I won't be you know looking for it. I think if they're smart, they shelve it after this for a while yeah i think they, i think they will yeah i think it would give at least five years before they put a new bond in put a new director in i would wait at least five years yeah i mean you you certainly right now hear a lot of uh, talks about who they'll be putting um to play the role for a bond there's been some names throughout thrown out there but it's still super early and um We'll see. Next up, speaking of spinoffs, we might be getting. Oh, now we might. We are getting right. This is this is confirmed, right? Supposedly in development, like supposedly like moving along. Yeah. The Penguin is getting his own show. Now I said this quite some time ago. I still don't know what it means for the future, but I did say that the Batman will be the beginning of something. Now, so far from the Batman, we're getting a Gotham show. And now we get in a Penguin uh, series on HBO Max in that Matt Reeves universe that he's uh, building. Colin Farrell is a fantastic actor. And when this goes down, if it goes down, hopefully they, they, they able, they're able to put this out there. You won't even see Colin Farrell. That's what's most um, exciting for me, Brian. Yeah, it's a weird thing to say. It's it, it. You're most excited about this because it, you know, Colin Farrell's in there, but you can't see him. And I, it's just a weird thing to say that. Like, I saw this and I was like, "Wow, they're just they're just taking every character out of this movie and out of this universe and giving them a show." But you know, the flip side is you knew that someone like Colin Farrell is not signing up for what did he say he's in? Four scenes, five scenes in the Batman, nine minutes. He's not in the yeah, movie. He said he, he totally told us what he's like. Ten he's minutes, five scenes, nine movie. minutes, right? Yeah. Like not much of the movie. Yeah. You know that he didn't sign up just to do that. Yeah. So when I saw, I was like, okay, well this this makes sense. I have no idea what they're going with this. I have some faith that because it is him and it's we know Matt Reeves is building a TV universe outside of the movie that Batman will be a presence in this series oh yeah 
So that at least and what that looks like, I do not know. Right. So that at least keeps you grounded and hooked a little bit that this, you know, this is a little more interesting than say we are complaints or concerns we've had about the Batgirl movie, which seems in a separate universe. Yeah. But look, I mean, like I said, Penguin's a challenging character. So I think it's one of those things where like we're sort of intrigued. Yeah. When we see the Batman and we see those nine minutes, mm -hmm. then I think we might be yes. excited. Yes, 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 yes. I'm just excited for this universe, man, because all the things that I dislike about other um, things that they're developing where, you know, the Batman may or may not exist. Who knows? I don't know. Well, they kinda, um, you know, in a weird way, I know they didn't base any of this on the Arkham Asylum, like those video games, but there is mm -hmm. a little whiff of that. The more of these news that we get, because that was really a universe building Batman game. Yes, yes, yes. And this has that feel of like, we're kind of like taking Definitely. the magnifying glass and zoom in over here and zoom in over there, but we're all inside this one playground. So Definitely. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that, man. Let us know in your comment section what you think about this uh, development in the Bat Matt Reeves Batman universe that he he's building over there, which, like I said before, this was certainly the beginning. And uh, I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm looking forward to it. For our final topic, very, very interesting topic. Simu Lu made some comments some time ago. I believe it was 2017. Um, you can certainly Google it. You'll find it. Um, it's, a, it's one of the reasons, probably a big reason, that China will not... Um, show this film in China. Um, one of the other reasons that I was reading was, um, you know, you know, China holds a grudge. What is the character of Fu Manchu and how, you know, um, the character of Shang-Chi was depicted. Obviously all that has changed, but China is not trying to hear, you know, what sort of changes you've made they're not just, they're not going to release this. Does Disney find themselves in a situation where they have to make a decision whether or not to continue with Simulu because they're not going to get access to I don't, you know what I'm saying? With Chloe Zhao, is is it is it gonna be, is it gonna affect affect their pocket enough to for them to make a decision like that? And listen, like we can't, we can't, because we have to make money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What are your thoughts, Brian, on that? Yeah, um, this is a really interesting topic, uh, and it's an unfortunate one, but we have to deal with it. So. I think the short answer to your question is, it's a real question. Yeah. And it's a real question for the simple reason you alluded to. This this is the second largest box office, sometimes the largest box office, depending on the film, yeah. in the world. Yeah. Disney is not going to take zeros from that box office on a sustainable basis. Mm -hmm. They're not. Mm -hmm. So let's look at a couple of possibilities here. So for, uh, and then let's take Simu Lu, who, you know, I think we're both generally fans mm -hmm. from Kim's Convenience. And I think, you know, he showed promise. I, as we said, the role was not fully, he didn't quite get all the way there, but there was promise in what he yeah, did yeah, in this yeah. movie. Yeah. But he, he speaks his mind. This is not an isolated thing with him. Yeah, yeah. Now he was much 
more obscure when he made these particular comments, which were about his upbringing in China and why his parents left the country. Mm -hmm. And he made some pretty harsh statements about how they felt about China when they moved to Canada. And it was yeah. meant, I think, as sort of a, like, we're so thankful and grateful to be in Canada. But it definitely was pretty harsh, the worst yeah. conditions in China. Yeah. But this is also somebody who has been embroiled in controversy around Kim's convenience and the way that show ended. He has been yeah. very outspoken mm -hmm. about the studio and the creators there kind of undermining the Asian cast, spinning off the lone Caucasian cast member. He has been very vocal opposing that. He likes to clap back on social media. Remember, he kind of yeah. overreacted to the Bob Chapek yeah. comment about Sean Chi being an experiment. He, yeah. he did not interpret those comments on the earnings call correctly. He yeah. clapped back at the CEO of the company yeah. within 24 hours. Yeah. And then when Sean Chi was successful at the box office, he put up a scoreboard tweet where he clipped all the articles that said Sean Chi was going to fail yeah. and wrote LOL. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just saying that this is a guy where that's his personality. Yeah. And he has every right to his views, his opinions, and his comments. Mm -hmm. But Disney would also have the right to make a change if they felt like that was too much of a wild card for the dollars they've got invested yeah. in the character and the franchise. Yeah. I'm not saying they should. I'm not saying they will. But I am saying you can't dismiss the possibility. Because had there been no pandemic, with the way this movie opened and the way it's kind of going, mm -hmm. to lose upwards of 200, 250 million dollars of gross. Yeah. If it gets attributed to this. It's a problem problem and and i said listen there was no pandemic when that movie was first um when that movie was first announced i don't think there was pandemic just yet and i no. said easily a billion dollars you crazy i China? thought it was i thought it was one and a half layup yeah because of the international appeal yeah and I had a question, but you sort of answered it. And the question was, could Simu Liu be too strong of a personality for Marvel to like rein in and and tell him to chill? Or, you know, is he too strong of a personality? Because if he, if he is, if they feel like they can't sort of, I guess, guide him towards how you need to be conscious of what it is that you're saying and how you're going to say it, you know, this could be Ray Fisher all over again. We recently had an, another case of this that didn't maybe get a lot of attention, but mm -hmm. so the Fast and Furious series has been highly successful in China. John Cena, who obviously is co-star in F9, mm -hmm. came under fire for making pro-Taiwan comments for Taiwan as a country. China didn't like that very much. Mm -hmm. They threatened to block that movie. Mm -hmm. John Cena was made to issue or chose to issue a very public apology before the promotional tour. The movie was given the green light. It grossed by pandemic standards a very healthy amount of money in China. Yeah. I don't know Simu Lu that well, but going off of the examples I laid out for you, I don't know that he, it, it, A, if we assume that an apology like that would, would assuage China, yes, 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 yes. I don't know that he would give it. He, I think he, he would. You think he would? I think, I think if Disney told him, listen, this is gonna happen, but you need to do this. If you don't do this, You just, just that Disney just said, if you don't do this, <laughs> that's so, it. The, the reason that I hesitate is that 
it's much more personal for him than it is for John Cena True. because of his birth and his background. Right. And so if he really is that outspoken and he kind of really is that passionate about things he believes in, I, I, I hear what you're saying. He certainly doesn't want to lose the role. Yeah. But would he see that as compromising his own beliefs and integrity to walk those comments back now? But if it gets to that point, Brian, where he doesn't, let's say, let's say that, that the possibility is there for it to be released in China and he chooses not to, that person, that, I mean, Disney, if I was Disney, I would probably try to get that, you know, and if he doesn't issue the apology, then that's a way for Disney to be like, you know, they can fix things with that option. I agree with you. I agree with you. They can fix it right there. Because the bottom line is, this is not a standalone enterprise. Yeah. This character is meant to be in Shang-Chi 2, Shang-Chi 3. Yeah. It's meant to be in Avengers. It's meant to cross over with Disney+. Plus. If, if his mere presence means the film or the product cannot be shown in China, that has to get fixed from the studio's perspective, yeah. one way or another. Yeah, and it gets fixed by, by trying to get that sort of that conversation happening with China. China says, listen, we'll do it if he issues an apology for saying what he did. And if, if he does it, fantastic, we move on. If he doesn't, we got to move on. And that hurts, I guess, Simu Lu for big budget films where they need, you know, that box office in China is like, yep. wh what sort of career does he want? I mean, he can certainly do indie films, you know, and do these small budget films where that stuff is not going to get shown out there, right? And let's be clear: is that yeah. fair? No, no, no. Not no, by isn't. not by the way everything you and I have been raised to believe and think about. Like that's not fair. Yeah. So we we are clearly dealing in like what's what's right and what's fair versus dollars and cents. Yeah. And and the gatekeeper is the Chinese government, yeah. and that's that is what it is. It's you yeah. know so. But I, I agree with you. I was like, it, it definitely could, it would be a shame if something yeah. he said when he was a nobody winds up subverting a career before it's, as it's just getting off the ground. Like that doesn't seem right. But look, we live in a yeah. society where what you say and tweet <laughs> and write society. five, 10 years ago yeah. cancels people right and left. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I just, yeah, I, you got to watch this one, people, because this is a big is, yeah. deal. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, this will be very interesting to see how this plays out. Um, but this is, you know, a conversation that certainly doesn't end here. and We'll most likely be revisiting this again. Well, we, we definitely will revisit again because we're going to go through it with Chloe Zhao in a couple. Oh, weeks. yeah. Oh, yeah. And For different gonna... reasons. Yeah. Um. Yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think about that situation. What do you think uh, Simulu should do? Should he apologize on his own and the movie doesn't get released? Or does Disney ask him to, you know, work something out with China and they ask him to, to apologize? If he apologizes, fantastic. If he doesn't, that gives Disney an out and a reason to move on. Um, but let us know in the comment section below what you guys think about that situation. Brian, um, Venom 2, October 1st. And yep. then I, I'm looking forward to James Bond. I've been wanting to see this film. for This movie was supposed to come out last year, wasn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that. And Brian, and I know we've spoken about this. I just want to just mention this so that we possibly get into a conversation uh, about it later and, and I, w I w it's getting late and I, we i'm certainly i'm certain that we've reached a one hour mark but there was another topic that we didn't discuss we'll, we'll discuss it next time and this is about this live action she that we're getting we gotta talk about that <laughs> because unlike he man this could work she can work he man, I see no way of it and how that works. We there are, certainly are some uh, 
things that you can play with because we already seen Battle Cat. If you saw Shang Chi, you saw Battle Cat. True. So that works. I don't know about the metal tank top and furry shorts. I don't know how that works. You know, so that's we got to talk about that next time. Brian, any last words? Last words, and I know we're we're going to talk about it in the future in much more detail. But a Hawkeye tra- trailer dropped this week, and uh, oh, yes, and, and I'll just say to the folks at home, a very interesting trailer. Watch it, and then I'm just going to say to people, Google Matt Fraction Hawkeye. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to do that. But when I watched that trailer, and I'll say this before we sign off, when I saw that trailer and saw what was happening, I'm more excited because it speaks to what I had alluded to about what Hawkeye should be. What made sense? As we all know, he did some stuff during... Um, after Infinity War and up until Endgame. We saw what he was doing. And there is um, it's not a coincidence that there's a rumor that Kingpin might show up in this. He's in New York. He, I'm pretty sure he took care of business over there. And who knows if Kingpin was one of the people that was snapped. And he came back to his organization destroyed by Nomad. Is it Nomad? Ronan. Ro- Ronan. Ronan. Yeah. There's no coincidence there. I think I'm excited for this show. I think I had it in the lower tier of my yeah. top uh, whatever shows that were going to come out. This has certainly jumped up there. We got to revisit that. Yeah, we'll, we'll try to talk about it in more detail. I, my first watch, I kind of shrugged my shoulders. And then when I started to read the layering of the signals in this trailer, more so than any other show that we've seen, I got more excited because this is apparently one of the greatest comic runs that Marvel's put together in the last 10 or 15 years. And this show, the, everything, the look, and even the logo are pulled right from the comic, which is sort of might be a hint that even though there's going to be more connections to other things in the MCU, this might actually be an adaptation of an actual comic run, which we have not seen Marvel really try. Yeah. And that got me excited. Yeah. Yeah. They have never tried it. And I think some storylines is just it's just out there and then you sort of have to rerun things. But this, because it was so acclaimed and was so well, um, I guess, and as you do, you're dealing with regular people, you can do this, right? You're yeah. not dealing with the infinity stones. You're not dealing with that. You're dealing with natural places and nothing crazy. So it, it certainly can be done. And it's gonna be very interesting. We'll talk about more about that next time on the Nerd Gym Report. Again, hit that like and subscribe button. Um, share with your friends. Um, and comment in the comment section below. If you disagree or agree with what we got to say, if you think we're full of it, then tell us that and just let us know why we're full of it. Um, but that's our show for today. We'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report.